Here's a moral question for you. When does a political conviction become a prejudice and is there a difference between a deeply held belief and a blinkered ideology? Many of our MLAs have very strong feelings about important issues across the board, so should we embrace our opinionated political class? The natural order, whether one, one believes in God or whether one believes in evolution, the natural order is for a man and a woman to have a child, and therefore that uh, has uh, made my views on adoption very, very clear, and on raising children very, very clear, and it should be a man and a woman. I look forward to the day when this Assembly decides to end ac academic selection for good. Until that day, I will strive to make it irrelevant and to limit the damage that it does. And that maybe, just maybe, sometime in the future, people's opposition might reduce. That's why I'm not scrapping the National Parks Bill, but I am shelving it. Fracking poses, in my opinion, fracking poses, in my opinion, it's my opinion that counts. In my opinion, Well, joining me now are two people with strong views on the rights and wrongs of political convictions, the Green Party, Stephen Agnew, and the former Alliance MLA, Seamus Close. Stephen Agnew, first of all, um, Edwin Putz has been the focus of a lot of attention recently on this subject. Rightly so, in your view? I think so, because uh, the thing I've questioned Edwin Putz on, yes, he has his personal values, and he, he's been very clear and articulate in those this week. Um, but I've asked for the evidence, for example, with uh, denying... Uh, unmarried couples or uh, those in civil partnerships from adopting where his is evidence that that would cause harm to children to allow them to adopt. He's yet to present any evidence what he's presented as values, and, but I believe um, we need evidence to inform policy and in fact the American Psychological Association has reviewed over 500 papers and they've said there currently is no evidence to suggest that uh, same-sex couples raising children cause the children any harm. Seamus Close, do you think it's acceptable to introduce legislation based on personal values, personal conviction? Well, I think, you know, if you don't have conviction, what have you got? Do you form your policies on lack of conviction? I think all politicians have got conviction. That's what brings them into the political arena. They want to get their views. They want to get their policies across. Now, the real question is what is forming that opinion? What is forming that conviction? Is it purely on religious beliefs? Is it your own personal conscience? Or do you have moral values? Now, if you answer yes to any of those, be it your conscience, be it morality as examples... Are you supposed to set those aside because you're a legislator or because you're in politics? But does there have to be a conflict between that and an evidential approach or a party policy approach? Because party policy, of course, is, is where you find yourself struggling in terms of your personal conviction because there was a divergence. Yes, and if I couldn't accept what was becoming party policy, then I was left with a decision to make. Did I bend like a willow and accept it willy-nilly, even though in my inner heart... I didn't think that it was correct. Therefore, I took the stand and I, I left. Now, uh, what's wrong with that? There, there are certain beliefs that one holds and one holds dear. And, and you cannot be blamed for holding those particular beliefs. No, if you but are here's persuaded. the difference. Here's the difference. Um, you weren't a minister at the time. Edwin Putz and others are ministers. We saw some of them there in that little short extract. In fact, you, I'm right in saying I think you weren't a serving MLA at the time. You were, in fact, um, retired as an MLA. So you were a party member. It was less of an issue for you than it is for some of the people who find themselves standing at the dispatch box. Well, you're partially right. Part of the reason why I was no longer an MLA and why I didn't fight the election was because of my deeply held views on a particular issue, along with other things that had happened in the past. But that led me to take a personal decision that I was no longer going to fight an election for a particular political party. I, I think there has to be a, a difference between uh, beliefs and policy. I, I think certainly for me there is. So, for example, I'm vegetarian. But it's not Green Party policy that everybody should be vegetarian, nor would I try to push that, because that, that, that for me is a personal value. It's not a policy, it, it, and that's, that's not what but it's about. But if the Green Party developed a policy that said you had to eat meat, your personal conviction would mean what you couldn't remain in the Green Party. Um, I, 
I don't think that's a policy to say you can't, you know, and that's where forcing well, beliefs. It's entirely so, hypothetical, I understand, of but course, you can but, see the kind of no, issue that could I, be I, problematic I, I, for you. I, I take your point, but I, I don't think it's, and that's where I make the difference between personal values. You know, we, we, we yes, have there, the Green Party. That's, that's where par uh, political parties should leave room for conscience issues. Sure. And, and I think most political parties do leave room for conscience issues. Yeah, but this is about policy making. That's the difference. When a but minister stands up, it's not about a private conscience vote. Yeah. It's about directing and policy I, that I affects everybody in the country. No, I, I, a minister is standing up and, and he is talking about an issue upon which he is trying to get legislation. Mm. So therefore, is he wrong to try to persuade people if it is based upon an informed conscience and a principled stand? Okay. Well, 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 he, he, may, he may have to change because public opinion is against him. I think there's but a that's difference what between allowing for conscience and, and then what becomes active discrimination, in my view, and an irrational discrimination, because my not eating meat, uh, you know, given the example you gave, that harms no one. But the minister's personal conviction is actually discriminating directly against one section of the community. And, and I think in that sense, harm is being done. And I don't think you can just justify that in value. You need evidence to discriminate on a rational basis. Okay. If you can't that in itself is a matter of opinion. OK. Fascinating stuff. We may continue this a little bit later tonight. We've got to leave it there for now. Thanks both very Thank much you. indeed, uh, Stephen Agnew and Seamus Cloops. Now, listening to what...